Hello, I'm Axubot George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, all month we've been talking about the blessing of Abraham. Hey, you need to listen to those messages again and again, not just once. Let it be established in your heart. Now, today is Friday, and it's the last Friday in the month of April. Praise God. Hey, what does that tell you? Now, this is our last broadcast for the month. By Monday, we'll be in the month of May. And I want to invite you, first of all, to our prayer and fasting program on the 1st. But it actually begins by 12 midnight, entering the 1st of May. And, and we'll be fasting until uh, we finish, because we pray according to the watches. So we, we're going to be praying at 12 midnight, and then at 3 a.m., and then at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and then the final watch, which is 9 p.m. So we're going to be fasting all around until after we're done with the last watch. Now, each prayer lasts for about one hour. So I want to invite every one of you. The prayer meeting holds via Zoom. Now, I'm talking to the Spirit of God if He will allow us to bring up that meeting to maybe Facebook, and just make it open. And um, I will do that the moment he gives us the go-ahead. But for now, at least for today, I'm making this announcement. It's going to be via Zoom. Praise God. So the Zoom link is on your screen. Please take note of this and make your plans. Join us on the 1st of May. Praise God. Woo, glory. Now, I, I believe these teachings have been a blessing to you. Why do I spend time? For example, why would I take a whole month talking about one, just one topic? The reason is this. To everything we have believed in Christ, the establishment of its truth in our heart is the most important. If that truth is not established in your heart, through scriptures, then you will have challenge because sometimes people just follow the wave of the moment and then after that wave, it's gone. No truth was deposited in their hearts. No truth was deposited in their hearts. So we take the mind of God and begin to explain it and expound it to you so that you will be established in the truth. Now, whether anyone is there or not, you are free to make contact with the Lord and walk in his truth the quality of truth you know will determine the quality of life that you live if your life is beggarly it's not because there is no grace available it is because you have accepted it if your life is hard it's not because grace is not available it's because you accepted that hard way of life you say no how did i accept it you accepted it because that is the truth that you have if you want to change it, you can't change it by prayer alone. You change it by opening your mind to truth. I told you on Monday, what prayer does is to change you first. If you're really praying, then you will be changing. You will see yourself change. Because you're making contact with the spirit of truth. And his job is to open truth to you. Now, if truth is open to you, then you will change. But if change is not happening in your life, then it means you're not making contact at all. You're just making noise. You're just wasting time. If you've been praying for one thing for five years and it has not changed, watch it. You have not changed first. Because most times when we pray, we are somehow afraid to let the prayer we have prayed affect us. We rather want the prayer to affect everything around us apart from us. So you are scared to hear the Holy Spirit give you specific instructions. An unconscious fear. Yeah. You're praying. What if the Lord tells you, live where you are now and move to so and so place? Huh? Where am I going to start? So you see, your mind is so conditioned. And that is what is affecting lots and lots of Christians. Not because the hand of the Lord is shut, but because their mindset 
have kept them in one spot and made them comfortable. Now, this happens to everybody. I'm sharing that with you now so that you begin to make space for change. You begin to make space for enlargement. Why must you enlarge? Because what God promised Abraham will require the enlargement of your own heart to fulfill it. You can't fulfill it with a small heart. So God said, I want to, and I've told you the blessing of Abraham is not the Holy Spirit. No. That's the problem we have made. We have taught. Now we have received the Holy Spirit. God's blessing has been fulfilled. No, sir. The Holy Spirit is to help us keep the covenant that, will, that God will fulfill the blessing that he promised Abraham. What is the blessing? Very clear. Through you. I'm saying the, 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 the end part of the blessing. Through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And I prophesy to you today, as you open up your heart, that God will begin to give you grounds because it's in the covenant. God says he will sustain you. That's the first covenant he made with Abraham, with Melchizedek being involved. That's why Titan came into place. Then the covenant of establishment. God saying that I will establish you even in a foreign land where you are. So what does that tell you? Why would God give us a foreign land as our possession? I'll tell you why. Because he wants to bless all the families of the earth. So he wants to ensure he gives ground to his children in such, such places that they can encircle the whole earth. Do you understand that? So if God will move a, a, a seed of Abraham from point A to point Z, so that in that point Z, he will have it established that I have created a channel to bless every family in that place. And put another one in point F. And another one in... Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, that's how God has... That's why God will give you a land that originally... I mean, you were not born there. But he will give it to you for your possession. That's establishment. So, so I prophesy to you that God is raising you up to establishment. God is opening up corporations. He's opening up businesses. He's opening up factories. Things. You, as one person, will be responsible for supplying the blessing to a lot of people. Expand your mind. Everything that I've closed your mind, I command your mind to be opened right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit begin to deal with you in such a manner that your mind will be forced to expand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, I was teaching you sometime when we talk about, when we talk about Titan. This is the reason. Now that the Spirit has come, how do we keep the covenant of sustenance? We still keep the covenant of sustenance by Titan. You say, how? Yeah, now the Spirit has come. So, I'm blessed. Now remember, you tithe after you have been blessed. You tithe after you have received. You don't tithe so that you can receive. You tithe after you have received. But this is the consciousness. And this is what's going to keep the receiving coming. This is what's going to keep the, the blessing coming. When you receive, you first remember that I have received because God has given me the power to get wealth. That's your thinking. Not, oh, I'm the best worker in this place. I'm a hard worker. No, sir. No. There are people who work harder than you. And let me tell you this truth. Now, you may start as receiving salary, but you must graduate to something far bigger than your salary. 
Every child of God is entitled to it. You don't necessarily have to stop working, but grow your mind to get bigger than the job that you do. You are not the job that you do. The job you do does not, refi- does not define you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can be humble working in an organization, doing your work perfectly, but God will bless you beyond that organization. So much so that the organization will look at you and say, ah, we don't know if we can still keep you. Because, I mean, how much do we really pay you? And they've checked all their records. You are not stealing their money, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, because your life is plain. Because you're blessed. But how does that happen? You recognize from the little you get, it is God that gives me the power to get what. Now, why? So that he will establish his covenant. What is the covenant? That through me, all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay, so now I take out the 10%. That is the covenant. I'm mindful of the covenant. Are you following me? So now I receive that. And then now the Holy Spirit is in me. Hallelujah. So I go before him and say, Lord, I've I've just been blessed. And I know it is God that has given me the power to get what. Now who, who do I deploy this 10% to? And brothers and sisters, open your mind. Open your mind. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit tries to deal with you and he sees it so difficult. Because, because not him, but your mind is just blocked. I can only give my tithe in my church. Your mind is blocked. Your mind is blocked. The tithe doesn't belong to your church. The tithe belongs to who it belongs to. God. And God is not deaf. God speaks today like he spoke to Abraham. Praise God. And then he will instruct you. Take it to so and so. Take it to so and so. Now in doing that, he is meeting the needs of the whole world. Every family of the earth. You might start out small, but you are walking in obedience. Then he will trust you and he will increase your measure and increase your measure and increase your measure. Hey, he can increase your measure to the point that your tithe alone services a whole community. God can talk to talk to you. Say, son, your tithes. This is what I want you to do with your tithe. You see that community over there, make sure they have power. Oh, I'm not telling you to spend your money. I'm telling you to spend my money. Now, what do you think is going on? It is now God that is supplying that community with power. Say, so, Pastor Joe, what are you talking about? Is it that not holy that we talk? This is the holy thing to do. God, and, and, and here is the secret. Only You know, when we will speak by the word, because, because, because speaking by the word of others in Thus says the Lord, this is what you should be doing with your time. I'm telling you the mind of God. Now, watch this. Watch this. Mm. You got your money. You, you got some money. And then you are praying over your tithes. And God says, go and drill a borehole in so and so community. With your tithes. With my money. Hmm. Hmm. Lord, yeah. Okay. Now you go over there and obey the Lord. Now you are under command by the Lord. Hey, you go to that place. And then they say, oh, we don't have water. I say, yeah, God has answered you. We've come to drill boho. Now you drill that boho. Who's the owner of that boho? God, right? Now do you know what that means? An angel who supervise that borehole. Do you know what, know what that means? <laughs> that community, there is an evidence, there's a record in heaven that the blessing of God has reached that community. And guess what will happen from there? It will begin to expand and expand and expand till all the families in that community is blessed. That single act of obedience by you will attract every other person to obey God where that community is concerned. 
And before you know what's happening, that community is blessed. Their children are now going to school. And uh, now, now, not just but God can speak to you about. So one would say, um, all the families of the earth, we're not just talking about packing food in, in, in takeaway packs and going to share street by street. There are people who are called to do that. It depends on everybody's level. But can we simply obey God and let him fulfill? He says that he may fulfill his covenants, establish his covenant, which he swore to your father as Abraham. God wants to see, not just, you know, some of us say that, eh, government, government don't know what to do. Is it not government responsibility? Brothers and sisters, no, sir. It is God's responsibility. And he's doing it through his children. Are you a child of God? Then get big. Get big. Get big. Oh, light has not come to our uh, uh, community. I don't know what these government people are doing with the money. Ah, no, 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 no. You, you don't need them. Oh, no, you don't need them. Get big. Calabo Sopra Ida Hasulaiga. Let the government wake up one day and hear that something is happening in that community. Let the government wake up one day and hear that. Ah, ah, who built all these roads here? Yeah, we did. Why? Because now, now listen. There's a difference between you making up your mind to say, hmm, we don't have roads in our community. Maybe I should do one contribution. There's a difference between that and when you are commanded by God. When you are commanded by God, you why you are doing that, the angels are supervising it. Because it will fulfill the purpose of what God will not tell you to go do something in a place if he has not carried out his own visibility studies. So all you need to do is to do your own obedience. All the families of the earth, yes, all. All the families of Afghanistan, the families in India, the families, all, all, all. What we see today, brothers and sisters, is because God's children have not grown in knowledge and understanding. So God, in the act of mercy, is picking up random people to bridge the gap. While he's doing that, so, you know, most times people say, eh, why is that? It is unbelievers that are rich. They are not really rich. They are bridging the gap. Wait until the sons of God will come. Now, you that is supposed to rise as the child of God and become so big, and you are not doing this because now most of these people that are going and doing philanthropic work, you know they have an agenda. There's something that they are trying to get, but you are just simply obeying God. You're not saying, hey, let's do this so that by the time you know we, 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 we want to do this business, they will allow us to do our business. Hey, hey, hey. You are doing it because you are under command from heaven. And yours will be sustained because angels are involved. Brothers and sisters, there's so much work to be done. But we are not, we are not even started. We've not started yet. Because we do not understand what God is thinking. We do not understand what God is saying. He says he will sustain you. Then he will establish you. He will establish you in places you least expected. He will establish you in places you never thought you had anything to do with. He will establish you. I pray over you right now. The voice of God is coming loud and loud and loud in your heart. You are hearing the Lord and you are acting in obedience to every command that he gives to you. That's what the Holy Spirit is known for. Hallelujah. That's why he's in us. He's in us to keep the covenant working. So David said, be mindful of his covenant. How? Now the Holy Spirit in us is giving us instruction. He's giving us ideas that will make us mindful of his covenant. As for God, he is faithful to fulfill everything to the letter that he gave to Abraham. As we begin to rise, hallelujah, as we begin to rise, I pray that the supply of the Spirit in your heart will cause you to be obedient always to the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, as this month is ending, I pray for you, this weekend, you will see a miracle 
that will open your understanding to the greatness that God is talking about. That the Lord will visit you indeed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I love you very much. I'll see you on Monday, which is also next month. Praise God. And don't forget to join us in our prayer meeting on the first. Bye.